What are the most common causes for product launch failures? So when you're launching new software, and you're launching all the time, it can fail for lots of different reasons. The way I like to think about it is I kind of categorize things in three categories. One are like the self-inflicted failures, where mm -hmm. you deployed something that broke your systems, right? And when you're launching new software, those are typically more obvious and hard to, easier to diagnose. Mm -hmm. um, the second category are things that are more environmental. So I think of that as things like issues with your network mm -hmm. or you're using a third-party API and isn't working the way in production you expected, that sort of stuff. Um, and then the final category I like to think of is like load or, and I don't mean load just in traffic, but of any type of limited resource. So you can think of that as also like database connections or something where you've deployed software and it's using something up in a way that mm -hmm. you didn't expect. So typically in one of those three ways. Okay. Now, after a failure, because they sort of inevitably happen, what, what are the first things that a company should do? Um, well, I think the most important thing is communication, um, both within the company and the team, mm -hmm. but also to your customers. I think, and that's a really hard one, right? And you hear it a lot where people are really nervous about, you know, kind of telling customers, look, we're failing and we don't know why, or we have an issue and we don't have an ETA. But... You know, doing that and sharing your details often can restore confidence and help mm -hmm. more than it will hurt. Now, when you're in the middle of it, and I know when, you know, feelings are running high, what, what are the things that you need to do to gracefully get through a situation? Um, I think the most important thing is just to stay calm, mm -hmm. um, but also to just be really methodical about how you approach the situation. Um, one of the analogies I like to tell people is to approach ops like you would any product management process, like appoint a leader, have someone manage it, triage issues, fix the most important things first, um, you know, provide support to the team, um, and also like make sure when you're thinking about the solutions that the right solution for right now, like there's typically two, right? There's a solution for right now. And there's a solution that might be right long term, and mm -hmm. to be able to make those trade offs. Um, and then, of course, make sure that you do a post mortem and really analyze, you know, the pros and cons and what happened, and you know, integrate that as a feedback loop in your process. You mentioned long term. What are the things that a company has to do to make sure that they're managing these types of things, that they fully recover from a failure and they're better positioned down the road? I think post mortems is a big part of that, right? Really setting up that feedback loop and. If you only do postmortems after bad launches, they're mm. not going to be effective. So it's really yeah. important <laughs> to make sure right. that you're doing those on a regular basis and even after successful things. And not just because, you know, uh, it, it'll be harder to do than when things really go wrong. Like you never want to be like the people on the team that you're only, you're the only team doing the postmortem because it went poorly. Sure. But you can also learn a lot from your successes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it's kind of putting that final analysis in the whole situation that allows your team to constantly get better and improve. What are the things during a postmortem that you absolutely shouldn't do? Um, so make sure that you aren't making personal attacks. Like mm. I know that I've been in postmortems where someone will say, well, Fred was really sloppy and he didn't performance test his API and that made everything slow. And mm -hmm. those sort of statements are not helpful, right? So it's really important to make sure people can take a step back and be very mature about it. Have some good ground rules, have someone leading the discussion, have someone taking notes, make sure you take notes and publish it. Um, you know, Amazon and Google share their postmortems um, and they're really great examples mm. um, with all their customers. And I think that just gives everyone more confidence in that, you know, they're really understanding it and doing it right and taking steps to make it better. And that's probably the final thing. Make sure you have good action items. And, and even if you don't necessarily decide to fix things, make sure you understand what you could fix. Mm -hmm. So the last question I have for you, if there was one thing that you would recommend that people take away in terms of dealing with launch failures, maybe, maybe a mindset, that type of thing. What, what is it that puts them in the best posi position to address these types of things? I think there's a set of safety nets that you probably want to put in place, like the process. You know, mm -hmm. make sure that you have monitoring. Make sure that you use like application logging. Better even if every part of your systems are using the same logging, so you can kind of move seamlessly from one system to the next system. Mm -hmm. Make sure everyone has each other's contact information. Right. <laughs> and if you have like big customers, like you're a big B2B company, for example, 
make sure that their information isn't just stored in your CRM, right? Like make mm -hmm. sure it's stored offline somewhere so that you have access to that when things are really not going well. So I kind of call these the safety nets, but like this notion of being able to survive through crisis means in some ways being prepared through for crisis. Mm -hmm. And like, so thinking about, you know, not if our software fails, but when it fails, here's what our plan is and right. having that in place. Great. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.